Welcome. I would like to say that chivalry is not dead, and everyone here today should be knighted. Yet, most of you would probably say, Fernando, it is dead. <clears throat> those, especially those in my generation and older. Dead because it just doesn't seem like, it just doesn't seem like it's there anymore. But where did it go? We often like blaming those millennials for it disappearing and telling things like, back in the day when I was young, <laughs> I would let them go first. Now, of course, the twisted version of chivalry is dead. The one that allowed knights to parade through small towns on horseback, wearing a ton of metal, and killing innocent people all in honor of the kingdom. That's gone. But did you realize that the chivalry that we so desperately want to keep actually comes from very creative writers. They started spreading creative tales of pageantry and adventure, of knights in shining armor, roaming the countryside, battling evil, and selflessly saving those in need. Sounds like a Disney movie, huh? And they made millions off of it. Chivalry is alive and thriving. And I know that I can say that each and every one of you here today has demonstrated the code of chivalry at least once in your lives. You see, chivalry, it's actually within us, and all we have to do is pull it out again. So I would like to introduce a new chivalry, and I would like all of you to uphold to the new 2018 model. And all you have to do is one thing, and trust me, it's not downloaded out. <laughs> it's actually easier than that, than that. Just open the door for someone. This simple gesture can change a person's life forever. And studies have, sh have shown that doing kind acts for others can actually relieve a stressful day. Now, I don't want you to open the door for everyone because then you'll just be known as the doorman. <laughs> You see, I wouldn't be here right now if someone didn't do that for me. I grew up in the ideal middle-class neighborhood right down the street from here in Mar Vista, in the typical Mexican home where no one ever left. There was grandma, grandpa, my mom, <clears throat> two aunts, my uncle, my brother, my sister, two cousins, myself, and trust me, many, many others. Most stayed a while, or until Grandma got tired of them. <laughs> but even though there were so many people in that house, I still struggled, especially in school. And it was often hard to get help. And they always told me, Nando, just try harder. I got bad grades. I was a class clown. And I actually graduated high school with a 1.5 GPA. After high school, I decided to go to vocational school, where after six months, I dropped out. So I tried, it, I tried the local community college. And there, and there, too, I felt like I was chasing my tail, because I would enroll in four classes and then drop all but one, just so I could tell my friends and family, hey, I'm still in school. At the time, my greatest aspiration was to actually become the manager of the liquor store where I was working. But there was only three employees. <laughs> That's when, at the age of 21, someone opened the door for me. That someone was my brother's Aunt Dee Dee. She called me one day. And I thought to myself, why is Aunt Dee Dee calling me? I have not spoken to her in years. She asked me, <clears throat> How would you like to work for the school district as a special education assistant? Because I remember when you were in high school, you used to be a TA for a special ed class, and you seemed to really enjoy it. <clears throat> At that moment, I thought to myself, well, how can I get this job? I don't have a degree. I dropped all those classes. But you know what? I still have a few units. So I asked the most important question at that moment. How much does it pay? <laughs> she said eleven twenty-five plus benefits. To tell you the truth, I almost dropped the phone. Because this would be a four dollar increase over my current position, and I could finally afford a pay. 
pager. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to the present, and I can proudly say that I have a bachelor's degree, two teaching credentials, and I've been working for the same school district for 25 years. <laughs> Career, I have only worked with individuals with disabilities, and I love them. To tell you the truth, I love my job more today than when I first started because it has allowed me to meet so many people that remind me of Aunt Dee Dee. And in 2016, I had the privilege of meeting a woman that has been opening doors for individuals with disabilities in the workplace since 1996. Her actions have enabled more individuals with moderate to severe disabilities to be employed. But before I tell you her story, did you know that only, only 15% of individuals with moderate to severe disabilities are employed? Here's her story. In 1996, an emergency nurse named Erin Riley at Cincinnati's Children's Hospital questioned the injustice of the hospital's volunteers department. She asked, why are individuals with disabilities allowed to volunteer, but were never being hired? She took action and created a cross-system collaboration that included the hospital, a supported employment agency, and a regional center. Together, they took a volunteer that had Down syndrome and taught her in a systematic way how to sterilize dental equipment. After an internship, she was hired. And Project Search was born. <clears throat> Today, there are over 500 Project Search programs throughout the United States and several other countries. And the overall employment rate of individuals with disabilities that go through this program is 75%. So you see, the simple gesture of opening a door for someone can truly change lives. And I can honestly say that I don't know where I would be at right now if Anditi had not opened that door for me. So I ask all of you today to open the door for anyone in need. Be a life changer. Especially for individuals with disabilities so they too can thrive.